At the weekend, in your blog, you've warned that Hong Kong's economy may grow less than expected this year. At last, last update, it was a growth range of between 4 and 5 percent. What more can you tell us? Well, it, it would still be, be over 3 percent. But given the uh, ex export situation and the slower than expected recovery in consumer spending, we believe, uh, well, still positive growth, but not as good as originally expected. Hong Kong is riding out the higher for longer interest rate environment. How well are Hong Kong residents positioned for this? Residential mortgage loans in negative equity surged threefold quarter on quarter in the last quarter. Is it going to get worse before it can get better? Well, you know, depending on the interest rate environment, if there are uh, if there is another interest rate hike, uh, the interest rate going up, and also depending on the economic situation, let's put it in context. Back in 2003, at that time, the negative equity cases was over 100,000. And when we look at the current situation, what is need to be looked at is the repayment ability of uh, mortgage uh, borrowers. At the moment, we are still enjoying full employment, and according to statistics, people still have income growth, positive income growth. So the income to mortgage service ratio, mortgage to income ratio is still very comfortable level, below 40%. And the banks, when they extended loan, uh, they did the stress test. So uh, at the moment, uh, although interest rate gone up, we observe that default in mortgage service rate is still very low, below 0.1%. The Hong Kong government cut stamp duties for properties, easing curbs for the first time in about a decade. Uh, but some critics saying that it was just a minor adjustment. Is it going to move the needle? Well, you know, the demand side measures was introduced at the time when the demand supply situation was very tight. But at the moment, the situation is very different. So we do believe a gradual relaxation. Uh, we, we do believe what we have done is the right step because at the moment, uh, Hong Kong permanent residents not owning any property still better placed if they want to buy residential property. Now, the APEC summit is something that is coming up on November the 11th to 17th, and you are headed for San Francisco. You will be standing in for Chief Executive John Lee. Uh, this smooths out a diplomatically sensitive issue for Beijing and Washington. There is a divide in the world, though. What is Hong Kong's message when you go to APEC? Well, you know, Hong Kong under the one country, two systems arrangement is uniquely placed Connect, to connect the mainland and the world. This Financial Leaders Investment Summit is a very good example. Given the geopolitical tensions, you can observe that this year the participation from the international global financial community is overwhelming. Over 300 participants from overseas and about 100 of them are chairman or CEO of those institutions. So Hong Kong is still a very attractive international financial center, connecting the mainland and the world. Are you going to be participating in the Leaders Summit? Will there be any bilateral summits while you're there? I would be joining the finance minister's meeting first. And usually we would take this occasion to have some bilateral meetings. Those are still being arranged. Are you able to share with which countries? At this stage, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we would not be able to disclose details. Of course, all eyes will be on the expected bilateral summit between President Xi Jinping and that of President Biden. In your view, will we see a thawing in this frosty relationship? Well, depending on a number of factors, so it is indeed not appropriate for me to speculate anything. Has the relationship between the U.S. and China made playing the connector role that Hong Kong is more difficult? Well, there are challenges as well as opportunities. Given the situation, the unique function and role of Hong Kong is very obvious. Uh, Hong Kong is the window and the gateway for international investors and capitals going into the mainland and also mainland enterprises 
mainland capital going global. So uh, we do believe our unique role being the uh, testing ground, being a firewall, will still be there. And you know, under the one country, two systems arrangement, we still practice common law. Uh, we are, in terms of tax, very competitive. So it remains the best place in the world to do business. Uh, just so one last question, and as Hong Kong is forging closer ties with the Middle East, in a time when the region has become a recent geopolitical flashpoint with the Israel-Hamas conflict, are these risks a cause for concern? Well, politics keep changing, but it is important for us to connect with the Gulf region in terms of breaching the capital, breaching the investors. I understand that there would be an ETF launched by Hong Kong fund manager uh, investing into Saudi Arabia. And we have been seeing many delegations from the Middle East coming to our part of the world. So I'm optimistic about the mutual investments and mutual capital flows. Financial Secretary, thank you very much for joining us today and have a very productive trip to San Francisco. Yeah, thank you, Emily. We've been speaking with the Financial Secretary of Hong Kong, Paul Chan, as we continue to hold court here at the Hong Kong Financial Global Leaders Investment Summit at the Four Seasons. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks so much for that, Emily. We're looking forward to...